Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Super Agents Lives. If you don't know the show, uh, this show, we talk with top producing real estate agents, coaches and authors. And uh, look, I really try to, to, to tease out uh, what they're doing and how they've been successful. And hopefully you can uh, implement some of that stuff in your life. Now, today's episode, excuse me, pretty interesting guy. Um, here's here's why I brought this guy on. Um uh, he's a cool guy, number one. Number two, uh, he twice in his life parachuted into a brand new market where he had no network, right? So he, I'm in San Diego. This guy's in Carlsbad, which is about 40 minutes from me, still part of San Diego. But he came from Sacramento to San Diego, started a brand new career in real estate, knew nobody, knew nobody. And he was just coming off a giant personal tragedy. Uh, so we talk about how he started to build a network. Now, here's the other interesting component of this guy's life is um, he, he he didn't like messing with buyers. And, and you know, I, I don't he, he couldn't convert them. He didn't like it. He, he couldn't convert them. And even though he's a social guy, and you'll hear that come out in this episode. You know, he's not a guy who is, uh, you know, gets super cozy with his client. He doesn't want people over his, to his house. He, we talked about that as well as, you know, he didn't want people in his car driving around. So but he is uh, going full force because he did an interesting thing. He picked a niche. He niched down and it wasn't beachfront houses kind of a niche. What he did was he became the attorney's uh, the attorney's realtor. Um, so we talked about how he became the attorney's realtor and how his relationships with these attorneys, how you know, he got 40 listings, not 40 referrals. He got 40 listings from one guy. We talk about that. So stay tuned. I think you're going to like it. Uh, and uh, we really kind of get back to basics. Uh, may, right around the 20 minute mark, you know, I, I, I talk about starting over. What would you do? So hopefully you're going to get something good out of it. Uh, uh, and uh, look, I did. OK. Hey, real quick, before we get to that amazing interview, uh, let's do a little housekeeping. Number one, uh, uh, if you haven't nominated the show for the uh, Inman 2014 uh, Most Innovative Real Estate Apps, please do it. And I'm making it very easy for you. Number one, just go to the site, superagentslive.com. Click on the, this episode or the last few. Um, as I said, I'm going to be talk to, trying to get you guys to nominate the show uh, up until when uh, in June when the voting closes. Uh, we would love to be nominated. Would love to win. Go to the, to the site, and on the episode, there's a big there's a button that says read more. Click that button, and then I'm going to have a giant orange button that says nominate the show. Go through and nominate the show. What do you get? Well, we have a, a membership group and uh, you know what? That's 147 bucks a quarter. And if you, all you gotta do is nominate the show, send me a screenshot and uh, you are in. So we'll put you in that group. And uh, look, that is a big mastermind where you know everybody is uh, gonna be sharing their stories, sharing strategies, what's working, what's not working. I'll be in there contributing uh, and other top agents will be in there contributing. <clears throat> so do that, please. The other thing that you're going to get in terms of the membership, here's how the membership, the, the site's going to work. There is going to be a free membership and that free membership is, uh, you know, you get access to this podcast, um, which you do already, no big deal, but there's lots of things people ask me for all the time. Hey, Toby, what are, you know, tracking sheets? Do you have scripts? You know, and people ask me for stuff and I'm, I'm constantly, which I'm happy to do, but I'm constantly sending out emails going, okay, hey, look, you know, here it is. So uh, when you join the membership, at least at the even the free level, uh, you're going to have, uh, you know, I, all those little tiny things, you know, outlining a Twitter strategy or something uh, that I can't do. It doesn't fit for the show, 
um, it will be there. Okay, so uh, nominate the show. If you don't know, uh, the hashtag for this show is uh, hashtag unpack that idea. And uh, it's a big follow train, right? So uh, go ahead and send out a tweet, something you hear on the, this episode or others, and uh, I'll follow you back. And we encourage everybody in that train uh, to follow one another, right? That's part of the community. All right, so let's get to the show. Hey, Vince, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, hey, I've given a, a brief uh, background of uh, your, your rich and varied career, but take a minute. <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and, and your business today. Um, well, my background was I was in the Navy and I got out um, working in St. Louis with my wife, found out she was pregnant, and my you know so we're struggling. I'm living in a, a mobile home with my brother. He lives at one end. We live at the other end. We have three dogs, two cats, and oh my God. I'm sure we had some mice. And it sucked. I mean, it was just, this wasn't what I got out of the military to do. My sister uh, started a real estate company in Sacramento, and she's like, come out to California, and we'll make a million dollars. I'm like, I'm game. So she sent me the money for gas. Um, we got in the truck and drove. Uh, we hit the California border. I think I had $26 in my pocket. I had two dogs and a cat, and my wife was pregnant. Oh, my God. So I was all in. Right. Yeah. Um, so I go up to California, up to Sacramento, and I get in the mortgage business, and went from a nobody to you know doing about 100 transactions a year, which seemed a lot. But you know, I was working for guys that were doing five, six hundred, so I made a good living. Um, in 2005, my wife was diagnosed with cancer, and unfortunately, in 2006, uh, she passed away. I'm sorry. So here I am, top. The market had just crashed. Uh, I got two kids, my wife passed away, everything just collapsed. Um, I lost my house, I lost my cars, I filed bankruptcy, I, I lost everything. And I was just like, I need a, I need a fresh start. I, I need to get out of this environment, I need to just go somewhere and do something. So I asked the kids, you know, my son was eight, my daughter was five at the time when my their mom died. I asked them, where do you guys want to go? And they're like, Italy. Well, okay, let's get a little more realistic. <laughs> Because I'm Italian, but I don't speak any Italian. Right. Um, so we picked a beach community and came down to San Diego, and I said, that's where I want to be. Uh, moved to Carlsbad, didn't know anyone. Um, found an apartment and about two blocks from the beach, and I had nothing. I had no contacts. I, I didn't know anyone. Uh, my sister's company had one realtor who was kind of a one to 2 agent uh, that worked down here, but it wasn't really what he wanted to do. Uh, so that was my only connection down here. Um, so I didn't know what to do. So I, first thing I did is I joined the board of realtors. I'd never sold a house before. I was a mortgage guy all the way till the time I moved down here. I joined the board of realtors, um, went and got my broker's license, and started making phone calls. And initially, I was just holding open houses. I was holding open houses seven days a week, trying to generate buyers. Realized that I am not a great buyer converter. But what I'm good at is business to business. So from there, I, uh, you know, I find that every professional industry has a professional organization. Realtors have MLS. The, the lenders have their, you know, professional organizations. So do attorneys and CPAs and financial planners. So instead of cold calling these folks, I joined the professional organization. Now I'm calling on behalf of the bankruptcy forum. And I just start pounding the phones. And I got in front of a couple people who introduced me to a couple people that introduced me to a couple people. And, and I, I just grew my business that way by hitting the phones and hitting the streets. Interesting, man. I mean, you, you, you actually had to start over twice. You come out of the military, you have zero dollars, a pregnant wife and three cats. Um, and uh, you took the leap and said, listen, I'm going to get in the car and drive to Sacramento and start a whole new, a whole new career. You did that. You were successful. Then, 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 uh, unfortunately, your wife passes, and uh, you lost everything. Vince, how did you look? I mean, one of the questions I ask on the show is this, <clears throat> and I don't ask it every time, but you know, I, it, real estate is a business of no's, and sometimes you have those days or those weeks or those months that you just feel like you got kicked in the guts, and you wake up and you're like, man, I don't know if I can do it again today. You had to have felt that way. When you're when you're driving from Sacramento with your two kids in tow, and you again you have no money, what I mean, what did you do to dig deep 
and and to to lift yourself up out of that? Well, you know, go down to the unemployment office and uh, stand around and and determine: Do I want to stand here or do I want to stand with the guys making money? Um, for me, I didn't have you know what were my options? I could be I could be homeless, I could lose my kids, I could you know I could go further down that that hole, or I could bounce. Um, I you know you, at some point you just gotta crank it out. And I remember sitting when I, I used to work for this company and they'd have office meetings. I never went because you know I'm like I'm not gonna sit through that that rah rah. And um, one of the one of the agents had asked that kind of that question. Well, how do you stay motivated? What do you do? And I had to chirp. And I'm like, you know what? Look at your bank account. If you like the number, go home. If you don't, pick up the phone. It, it, you know, it's that simple. And if you're happy where you're at, fine. If you're not, do something about it. And so for me, yeah, you get beat down. You, you know, you have those bad days, bad weeks, bad months. Um, I'm not where I want to be yet. But I'm a very... I'm very clearly, I know where I want to be. I'm very clear on my goals. I'm very clear on what I, the steps I need to take daily, weekly, monthly, yearly to get to those goals. Um, I came to San Diego and I came, I didn't come here to be mediocre. I came here to dominate. And I said in 10 years, I want to be in the top 10 agents. I actually want to be in the top five, but, um, but that was my goal. And there's 20, 25, 28,000 licensed agents in San Diego County. Or license people that are licensed by the Department of Real Estate. Um, I ranked at 165 last year. All right. So I got a long ways to go for me. Most people are like, oh, that's amazing. And for me, I'm like, I'm 160 off of my goal. So, but but I have that in front of me. I mean, if you look at my desk, I got my goals all the way around me. I have my monthly goals. I have my yearly goals. I have what I did last year. And when I get beat down, I'm you just pick up the phone and you just keep dialing. Right. And, and, and if it, it ties into what you said earlier, right? You, you, it, it's, you know, your why you're very clear on what you want and, yeah. and, you know, and, and, uh, you, you have a family, right? And there's no, there's nobody else is going to help you. Nobody's going to get you there except for you. So I love that. And I'm sure you're going to, you're going to get to top three. How, what's your time frame for that, Vince? Um, don't you know, say, um, come on, you're clear. What's your no, time? <laughs> it's real clear. I mean, it, it, here's the thing is that I turn at 55. I want to retire. Okay, okay, I'm 48 now. I turned 49 in September. So by next year, by next September 8th, I have to close $61 million in sales. Now, I've never done more than $20 million. Um, so I have to, so I'm pounding the phones now, right? So I'm like, I got I to gotta step up my game big. Um, by, uh, by 20, oh, I'm sorry, by 2016, which is two years, I want to be in the top 50. Okay. By 2018, I want to be in the top 10. I love it. I love it, man. Well, we, I definitely want to keep uh, keep tabs on you as you move up through the ranks. Um, so, so here's what. Let's talk about your business today because um, today's episode uh, is uh, I did it myself. Uh, it wasn't an interview, and um, we hear on the show all the time. You have to have a specialty. You have to have a niche. And when people think about a niche, they think about okay, uh, beachfront homes or downtown condos or whatever. And I said, well, you know what? You don't have to. It doesn't have to be that that kind of house, right? Mm-hmm. You can you can find a demographic and 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 uh, so reverse that. Today's episode is actually uh, how to market, uh, how to find a niche and market to millennials. For you, you are branded. Your brand, right? Your demographic, your your niche is you are the attorney's realtor, and I and I I, I love it. Talk to us a little bit about that and how you landed on that niche and how you went to, to go about dominating that niche. You know how I found the niche was uh, I used to do a lot of marketing as a mortgage guy to in those real estate magazines. Bad credit, no credit, give me a call, I can get you a loan. And what I found was I got a lot of people that had bad credit, no credit that were giving me a call. Um, some of them I could help get a loan, but a lot of them you couldn't do anything with. And I was like, you know, if you're a gold mining, some do that information is gold to somebody. It may not be gold to me, but it's gold to someone. So then I started thinking, okay, who would like this information? Well, bankruptcy attorneys. You know, they're looking for people that have bad credit, that want to get rid of it, that want to get a fresh start. So I started building relationships with bankruptcy attorneys saying, hey, I've got all these leads that I paid money for that I want to do something with. Let's build, let's build business back and forth. You have people that filed bankruptcy two years ago that can now buy a house. It's symbiotic, Right. Um, I send you leads, you send me leads, everyone's happy. Um, then as the subprime market came along, you could actually get people loans that were a day out of bankruptcy, 
you know, 100% financing. There's all those niches where people that had gone through that, you know, bankruptcy process had been now they could buy a house and they needed a loan. I was their guy. So that's how that all started out. Um, as I, when I moved down here and I was like, okay, now what do I do? I have this background working with attorneys, uh, but I didn't know any attorneys down here. Um, I kind of looked, I looked in the mirror and said, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? My strengths are, I'm good at business to business. What my weaknesses are is that I don't like working with buyers. Um, I, I just, I can't sympathize well with them. Um, I don't convert them well at open houses. And so I said, well, how do I take my knowledge of attorneys and my knowledge of CPAs and financial planners and how do I create a business model from that? And what I find is, you know, if you're trying to find new business, you have a choice. You can go consumer direct or you can go business direct. And the consumer, you spend the same time and effort and energy to convert that consumer to use you once as you do with an attorney who's going to refer you over and over and over and over and over again for life, right? Yep. So pick one. Which one do you want to work with? Um, you know, for me, it was a simple, you know, I had one attorney that sent me 40 listings in a year. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. You know, 40 listings or 40, 40 referrals? 40 listings. You got 40 listings from one guy? One guy. Amazing. And it's funny because he tells me when it, he goes, yeah, I had another realtor trying to get in and get my business as we're, you know, having dinner or whatever. We're, we've become great friends. And we just laugh about it. And I call the agent and say, you're wasting your time. Um, <laughs> but that's the relationship you're trying to build. You know, like my sister's business is great because what she does is she is awesome about when she sells someone a house, that person is her friend for life. You know, that's her personality. She loves doing that. She's kind of got that matriarch thing where people come to her house. I'm not that guy. And by the way, wait, let me just jump in there real quick. By the way, Vince's sister that he's talking about for everybody is it's Marguerite Crespillo and she's her episode is go look for it. It's she is a, a she's a fan. I love that girl. She is so right. easy to talk to. And I've gotten so much great feedback from her, her uh, from her episode. Now, look, so that's her bit, right? She what? she's very people person. She'll have people over her house. That's not me either. I'm not into like I, I want to I that is not me. So how did you so, you know, that's not you. You mm-hmm. do want to build deep and long lasting relationships, but you're not the come over to my house guy. Um, how did you how did you blend those two? Well, it, it, it's not that I don't, you know, I don't entertain. I don't have friends, but I don't have a, a network of 2000 friends. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm more of a I have eight or 10 people and they're my close, close, close associates. We yeah. do everything together. I've been to their house. They've been to my house. They can drop by anytime they want. And that's the, that's the friendships I'm looking for when I build with attorneys. I think the biggest mistake, a couple of mistakes that it, uh, realtors make, one is um, they're used to being the top of the food chain, so they don't know how to be humble around other businesses. Uh, the other is, is that once an attorney says, yeah, I'll send you something, they never let go. And I struggle with that, too, is that I've been working with this attorney for six months, and I look and I go, you know, he's never referred me anyone. I go to his office every week. I bring goodies. I talk to his staff. He's never referred to, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get someone to you. Finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm done with you, dude. There's no, you, you don't get it, and that's fine. I just need to find someone who does. And you go through a lot of, you know, chaff to get to that weed, right? You go through a lot of people to get to those, those one or two that can send you 20 deals a year. So well, help me understand how you I, – I, I completely agree with that, right? Um, okay. um, but how do I get them, right? Well, so first of all, I, yeah, I want to know how you get them for sure. But <clears throat> so earlier uh, when you were in Sacramento, you were, you were getting those leads. And then you went, found a guy and said, hey, listen, I'll give you my leads. You give me your leads. Uh, and I understand that one, right? What right. Do you, when you come here, you don't know – you, do you still have those leads? How are you getting the – what are you trading? Well, I don't trade anymore. <laughs> okay. All right. So, they, well, the food chain, see, that's the thing is that most agents go, well, I'm the top of the food chain because they have the title, escrow, lenders, all those people beneath them, right? So they're like, I'm the, I'm the lead generator, and it all filters down, right? The trickle down theory. Yeah. I don't get leads from my title. I don't get leads from my escrow. That's not how that relationship works. Okay. Right? I might get a lead from my mortgage guy here and there, but I know that that's not how that relationship works. It's the same with the attorneys. I'm not going to. I, you know, I got six different family law attorneys. I can't refer them all out somebody. I don't, that's not the pond I'm fishing in. Okay. Um, but I let them know that. I said, look, I can, 
I'm not going to be a referral source for you. Let's just get that clear. I'm also not going to pay you a referral fee. Okay. What I bring to the table is your clients are going to go out and get somebody to sell their home. It's a no. They've got to sell it. They're going to find someone. I'm in the top 1% in my, in my market. That means there's 99% of the other people that don't do what I do. They don't have my experience. They don't have my knowledge. They don't get how we interact. Your client has a really good chance of hiring one of those other agents. You'll have no control. You're, and you're probably not going to get a great result that you're hoping for. And it's just going to cause more work and more issues for you. Um, so that's part of the pitch. The other part of the pitch is, um, you know, we take awesome care of the clients. We get them to refer back. Uh, we're just going to take care of that entire process for you. Why wouldn't you? You know, so you, you've got to have your value add, like what makes me different. Um, but if people know you, like you, and trust you, it doesn't matter if you've never sold a house before in your life. If you can get someone to love you, they're going to refer you if they get it, if they get that picture. Yeah. That makes sense? Or? Um, yeah, it makes – I mean uh, the last part I, I totally agree with, right? If, they, if people know you, like you, trust you, you'll you, – and you will, they will refer you. Right. Um, but you – you need to make sure that you are, you let them know, you, you, you got to keep up with them. Just because people like you, they, they might forget that you actually are in real estate. So you need to make sure that you are doing your job on that side. In terms of, in terms of going out and talking to, you know, I'm a, I'm an attorney and you come to me, Vince, you say, Hey, listen, I'm a top, I'm the top dog, 1%, uh, and I can get a good result for you. I don't know that for me, that would be enough. You know, I, I, I you wouldn't say, even talk to me if I came off that way. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, so uh, I, I, how do you build those? You know, look, attorneys are busy. Real estate agents are busy. How do you how do you actually get time with this guy to get to get him to know, like and trust you and then begin to refer you? OK, well, look, look at it like this. Toby, you're, you're a family law attorney. OK. OK. And part of your on your website, it'll say, uh, I'm Toby. I'm a family law attorney. Look at all the places I'm a member of. I'm a member of the Family Law Association of America. I'm a f member of this professional organization, the American Matrimonial Lawyers of Association, blah, blah, blah. It's on your website. You, you've basically given me your resume. Yeah. Okay. Now I could cold call you and say, Hey, Toby, I'm Vince. I'm a, I'm a, I'm look at how wonderful I am and you should work with me. I'll never get past the gatekeeper. But if I join your professional organization, okay. I get involved in your professional organization and then I call you and I say, Hey, Toby, this is Vince with San Diego Smart Cell. And I'm calling you in regards to your membership with the American Certified Family Law Specialist Hey, we're having an event coming up. Are you in? Got it. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm, I'm not cold calling you. It's a warm call. I'm calling on behalf of something else, right? Yep. And so you're going to take my call because I'm calling on something that you joined. I didn't force you into it. I'm not selling you anything. I'm just calling you on in regards to your membership. And that's the conversation we have. So not only am I, am I benefiting, the, you're bene, benefiting your association because I'm making calls that they're not going to make, now I become like almost a, I won't say figurehead, but I become a, a authority because right. I'm part of your organization calling right. on their behalf and it becomes a warm call. I, so like, I, like I this, if a, if, a, if a mortgage guy is trying to get, get a hold of me, right? Some guy from Bank of America, hey Vince, I'm from Bank of America and I want to get business from you. I, I, click. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> um, if he calls me up on something that I have an interest in, Let's say it's, you know, my daughter is the cheerleader of Pop Warner. Hey, Vince, this is Bob with Bank of America. I'm calling on behalf of, you know, Pop Warner, blah, blah, blah. We're talking, right? Yeah. I don't care, if, you know, if he knows anything about Pop Warner, unless he's creepy. But um, <laughs> I don't care because now we're, we have a commonality that we're talking about. And he's not making a cold call. He's making a warm call on something that we both have an interest in. Right. Okay. I, I love, that's a, that's an awesome strategy, man. Um, and, and I want to just second what, what you said earlier about, you know, consumer or business, I would, I, consumers are an absolute headache. And if I could have a pipeline if a, a, a you know, from a business, I would take that every day. I mean, I, I would, that's my, that's how I work as well. So, right. so, so you make this call and to the attorney and say, Hey, listen, I'm calling on behalf of X organization. Then what, I mean, are you putting on some kind of event that you invite them to or what? Like, no, I'm not. I mean, you know, these places are starving for someone to help them out to put events together. Okay. They, everyone. Is. I mean, look at any professional organization. 
they all want to have events. They all want to have mixers. They all want to have something to justify the money that they're charging you. Yeah. Right. And usually the person in charge of it is the guy that gets stuck with it. They're like, yeah, I got volunteered by my boss. I'm the vice president this year. Woo. <laughs> yeah. And so you come in, you know, realtors, I think by law have to be outgoing and gregarious and all this stuff. And, and so you come in and say, look, I want to be part of your organization. And not only do I want to be part of it, I want to be involved. I want to, I want to help coordinate events. I want to support you in whatever way, shape, or form so we can get membership up, right? Right. Now, do I have an agenda? Yes. Um, but my agenda, not only it benefits them first, and I get the side benefit of just being involved. And so eventually you become that guy that, you know, instead of me going to one of the mixers and say, yeah, I'm Vince, I'm a realtor, you should send your clients to me. They're like, hey, you, yeah, that was a great event you did. I, I remember when you did that, you know, thing at the golf tournament. That was awesome, blah, blah, blah. Now you're you're not dealing on a um, – I'm, I'm not cold calling. Them. Yeah. So then when they, when, once they recognize me for being part of their event, now I'm almost like a peer. Now I'm going in for the appointment of, Hey, we should do business together. Right. You know, that is and a, it's, a great, I mean, that's a great strategy events. And, and I, you know, the, the, so I, you said it earlier, but I just want to just uh, bring it up just in case anybody missed it is, you know, following Vince's strategy, it's not, you're not only uh, a, a making a warm call, but you become that authority figure, right? You become this guy who is associated with that. It's like if you throw a party, um, it, everybody wants to get to know the host. So you you put, you are inserting yourself as that figure, uh, and and uh, so I love that. Yeah, and you could do it. You know, you could do it like how I got the idea was with the Chamber of Commerce up in Sacramento. Um, I was supposed to call twenty people a day at the time, and I was running out of people, so I joined the Chamber. And I was like, I was still cold calling. I'm like, this sucks. So I joined the um, the ambassadors. Now all of a sudden, I'm calling attorneys from the Chamber of Commerce. Hey, you joined the Chamber of Commerce. This is Vince. Love to connect with you and get to know your business. Oh, okay. Now you're in the door. So no, okay, I love that. So how and and I I I I. I anybody out in the audience, if you're just starting or you're struggling, I would love to see you put some ideas together on, on using a strategy and what other industries you can apply it to. So for real estate agents, Vince, I mean, you could use the same strategy as your school, but it's a little bit, that's a little bit different because right. you're not focusing on an industry like attorneys. What other, you know, if somebody wants to, to, to do the Vince strategy, what other industries do you think uh, this, this could work in? Um, Human resources, that's kind of a target that I'm starting to look at okay. as far as a, another leg of my business. Um, human resources are great for the big companies because you have people that are transferring, so you have relocation business. Uh, CPAs, financial planners. Yep. The, the thing is, is that you got to weed through a lot. Most of those people don't get it. And, and where we struggle, where you get a lot of no's up front, is as real estate agents and lenders, you know, we know, I, look, I need my lender. He needs me. That. that there's, I can't, I can sell houses, but I need a guy that can do the loans and he can do loans, but he really needs somebody that's buying. Um, real estate, most of those other industries, they don't get it. They don't trust it. They, you know, unfortunately we come across the salespeople and they're like, why would I send business to you? It's, it's easier for me just to let my client go do what they're going to do and right. I'm not going to deal with it. So not everyone's going to get it. It's not your job to teach them. They're, the ones that get it, get it immediately. The ones that don't, you can spend six months bringing them donuts every week. They're not going to get it. They're just they don't they don't understand it, and it's not in their. It's not. It's a different language. Not in the real house. Yeah, because look, right. if, if if I'm a CPA or a financial planner, I, you know, I've I've put tons of effort into procuring Jeff, my client. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to contaminate my relationship with referring them out to an unknown. You're not going to change that dude's mind. Right. You know, he's, he's set in stone that I am not going to contaminate my database. The thing is, is that, and I, I, I wish I'd come to this realization like 14 years ago, but I just realized this a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, you know, every time I build a relationship with somebody that sends me business immediately, it's beautiful. And I get continuous business from them. Every time I meet with somebody that doesn't send me something immediately, I'm spending six months trying to get business from them. And they never send me anyone anyways. Right. So, you know, when you get a no, believe it. Um, don't try to sell the person. Don't try to make them do something that it's not in their nature to do. 
get just thank you very much for your time and move on to the next person. Eventually, you'll find, you know, you're you're not looking for a million people. You're not a title or escrow guy that's got to work with 200 agents. You're looking for five people that can send you two deals a month. Right. If you're doing that, you're going to make a million dollars. So would you rather build relationships with 100 people and, and hope that they send you one deal a year? Or would you rather go really deep with five people that you can count on every single month to give you two deals? Yeah, you know, look, and this is, I, I did a company, uh, the comp- I did one company that kind of put me on the map in terms of just making money. And, uh, and I targeted publicly traded home builders. Now, in San Diego, when the housing was going crazy, uh, you know, there's, there's really, there's not very many uh, publicly traded home builders, but I had relationships with two. Right. Well, I had relationships with all of them, but I really did business with mainly two of them. And, uh, you know, I sold it once and I would I would get two million dollars of business from each company. And, I, and it was literally that came out of one meeting with one guy. And all of a sudden I got everything from that from that builder. So it's a, kind of the same model. Yeah. Um, so for you, you know, you were very when you started, Vince, you know, you're very clear in your why. Uh, um, and, you know, that's what what kicked you off running, you know, very quickly to success, um, you know, but, you know, you mentioned if you started over again, Vince, what would you do differently? I know you just said you, you had this realization of just cutting ties with people who don't get it early, but what other things would you do differently? Like if I was brand new to the business and I didn't know nothing about nothing? Yeah, go back, go back 14 years ago when you and your daughters landed in Carlsbad. Well, I would say, first of all, I have a son and a daughter, so. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. My, my son would be like, what? Um, <laughs> I would say look to children for inspiration, okay? Kids have no fear. They don't take no for an answer. They'll keep asking until you're finally like, fine. And I I always give my son props. I'm like, dude, you're going to be an awesome salesman because I'll tell him we should do something, and he never lets it go. And finally, whether I want to do it or not, I'm like, fine, just quit asking me because he obsesses on it, right? And – I think that I, I had that, I kind of had that going when, when I first got started, I was like, you know, I'm hitting on FISBOs, I'm doing all this different stuff. And I wasn't taking no for an answer and I had like great success. And then you start getting some deals going. You're like, you get a little, you know, comfortable, you get a little arrogant, you get a little, you know, eh, I don't have to do the work. And next thing you know, it's like, well, where's all my business at? Yeah. Right. Um, and so it's kind of like going back to basics. You have your basics of what are your strengths. When you're new, you're picking up the phone. You're doing all everything you need to do. Um, but I think that no matter where you're at in your business, whether you're brand new or you've been doing it for 20 years or, or somewhere in between, there's something that you, you're really comfortable doing and there's stuff that you really aren't comfortable doing. And an example is a lot of people don't like to cold call. They don't like to call expires. They don't like to do this and that. I don't. I hate calling expires. I, I see no reason to get beat up, right? But there's people that are phenomenal at it, that make, you know, top agents if that's all they do. Um, it's not my niche. It's not what I'm comfortable doing. And if you're not comfortable doing it, you're not going to do it. And so um, a good basketball analogy is there's Shaquille O'Neal and there's, you know, Kobe Bryant back in the Lakers. And you don't coach Shaq like you coach Kobe. They have two different styles. So find your style, what you're great at, what you really, really dig, and what you can, you're like, I, I, this is what I love about real estate. And that's what you pound out. And then you let, you let go of all those distractions. You know, uh, you know, someone's like, oh, well, I did this. and I got two listings. Well, I did this. and I got one listing. If it resonates with you, run with it. If it doesn't, ignore it. Right. And, and that's what, you know, you, you said earlier, that's what you did, right? So you, 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 I don't know at what point in your story, but you said you, you stepped back and you really assessed what your strengths were and what your weaknesses were, you know, and, uh, let me, have you ever read a book? It's called strengths finder 2.0. No. Um, I, for everybody out in the audience, if you, if you like what, what Vince is saying here, there's a book called strengths, strengths finder 2.0. And it is exactly this. It helps you unpack or unlock what you actually, what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And the, the whole notion is, is, you know, double down on what you're strong at and outsource, get rid of the stuff that you're weak at. Um, and if anybody, if anybody wants a free copy of that, go to audibletrial.com slash super agents live and you can get a free copy. Um, so that's great. So look for your strengths and, and double down on that. Um, uh, what do you think, you know, most people look, I mean, you, you jumped up and you are now number one, top 1%, which is awesome. I love that. And that's why you're on the show. 
a lot of people struggle, man. They, they, they work and work and work and they just can't, it just that doesn't happen for them. You know, what is it? Is there, is it, what's the one thing that most people are just getting wrong in terms of building their businesses or building their, their, their core strengths or, or whatever? I think the first thing is, is that you got to know where you're going, right? I mean, okay. it, I, and I tell people, I like, look, if you're going to New York, you don't just say, I'm going to go to New York and have no clue where it's at. You, you got a map, right? At yeah. least you know where it's on the map. You may not take the direct route, but you can fly there. You can drive there. You can take the train. You can walk. You can bike. You, there's a number of ways to get to New York from California. How you get there is not as important as why you're going, got right? It. So you got to yeah. have a real clear destination and what's your why. Once you do that, all the other stuff will come about. Um, and it kind of goes back to, you know, the strength finder thing, right? Pick what you're good at, get great people around you that are good at what that, what they do. Quit being a chief ass. Okay. Um, a lot of people, what they do is, um, they agents and loan officers, they process their own stuff. They transaction coordinate their own stuff because they don't want to pay that person 500 bucks. And I'm all in the time that it takes you to, to coordinate this transaction, you could have gone out and gotten two more deals or even one more deal. But what people normally do is they get a deal, they, cl- they work on the deal, they close the deal, then they go out and get another deal. Yeah. Well, that you just limited yourself to six deals a year by just the, the fact that that's what your mindset is. So if you took that and said, okay, I'm going get, to get a deal, I'm going to coordinate, I'm going to hire out the transaction coordinating. So while that's being coordinated, I'm going to go get another deal. So you're getting a deal. It's an escrow. Get another deal. It's an escrow. Get another deal. It's an escrow. And you're passing those off. Somebody else is handling the closing. Somebody else is handling all this stuff. And all you're, cor- all you're focused on is getting another transaction. That alone, by just letting go of something that you pay someone four hundred, four to five hundred dollars to do, is going to double your business. Right. And you know, right alone. and we talk a lot on the show about, you know, that, that, what that says to me is you need to be tracking, right? If you track all your activities and you know where your deals are coming from, you know, how many no's, for example, it takes to get to a yes, you can, you can really matrix that down into, okay, this is how much money I make per hour, right? If you, if you track everything and you put that through the matrix and if you look at, you know, and basically you're saying focus on the dollar productive activities, right? Your highest right. You know, dollar productive activities. Right. So is that something, when, when did you get that? I mean, is that something from your, you know, I, I, I sometimes realize with military guys, you know, systems and processes becomes natural to you because that's, that's, that's what the military is, right? So, I mean, it right. tr- did, did, is that where you learned that from your, is this some of your military background we're seeing here? I don't know if I'm, I'm a systems and process guy. I, again, going back to my sister, that she's got a system and process for everything. If you're walking in the door, there's a system and process for that. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, she's got this system in place that she can pretty much walk away from a business and it runs. I'm more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a structured person. You know, I get up at the same time. I go to bed at the same time. I do pretty much the, I, I, I wouldn't say boring, though my girlfriend probably begged to differ sometimes. Um, but I'm very structured in everything I do, and I'm very disciplined in everything I do. Um, and I, once I'm done with something on my desk, it goes into a cabinet and I don't, I'm not thinking about it. I don't have a desk with 50 files on it. I do the work on it, put it away. Do the work on the next one, put it away. Um, that's what works for me. And it took me a while to you know, kind of realize that about myself. But I think the biggest difference between myself and, and most of the agents that I've worked with in the past, the loans or real estate, I just assume that everyone closes 10 to 15 deals a month. And I'm a volume guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not the, the one $8 million sale. I'm the $300,000 sale, but I do a bunch of them. And so I'm a, I'm a volume guy. It's, it's what works well for me. I'm very disciplined um, as far as I, I, the listing agreement. I meet them. I put it in his file. I, I do all these tasks. It goes in the cabinet. I go get the next one. Got it. And then I track that. So when I'm looking at my, my little desk today and I'm like, you know, okay, so where am I at year to date? I've taken 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've taken 14 listings year to date, um, which is behind where I need to be. Um, I need to go get seven this month. Yeah, man, we're in April. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You're slacking. Right. <clears throat> so, 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 I mean, let's talk about your structured, your disciplined. Um, you, you have, uh, I want to talk about your day because you, you have this funnel. You have this built-in machine that spits out deals to you. 
right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, you learn that you need to have the don't take, you know, you won't take no attitude, and hopefully you're still implementing that. But what does what does your day look like? I mean, it seems like it seems like I feel like if I was in your shoes, I have five guys that give me deals. I'd be go playing golf, man. You're in Carlsbad. I'd be I'd be out at Tamarack surfing. Well, I'm, I would do that if I was at where I need where I want to be. Okay, but I'm not. And um, the market is always in flux, so you don't get the luxury of saying, "Okay, I, I've made it." Right? Um, you could have good years, but you can quickly be followed by bad years. And anyone who's been doing this a while can attest to that. Um, my day is: I get up in the morning, I take my kids to school, and then I go to the gym. I go to the CrossFit, and that's that's my thing. I get in the office about ten o'clock. Um, kind of look, you know, go get some coffee over Starbucks, come in and sit down and look at my day. Um, like today, if I wasn't on the phone to you, I would be following up some leads and then I'm going to call on some of my attorneys this afternoon. Just, Hey, I'm in the area. What's going on? Go, go meet the staff and I'll probably take donuts or bagels to one of them and, you know, make, go to lunch with somebody else. And I'm just, I'm out there being, I'm that guy that, Hey, you know, Vince, you know, how's it going? And, Hey, do you guys have anyone today? And I'm, I'm proactively looking for that business from them. I'm not just sitting here taking orders. Got it. Okay. And then, you know, I have my listings and I'm a one man shop. I don't have an assistant. I don't have, I have a, a transaction coordinator. That's uh, that doesn't work. She's independent contractor. Um, and I just pretty much do all that stuff myself. Quick and simple, get it done and, and go. Um, do you so think, that, yeah so do you think okay i mean that's good but so you're 48 mm -hmm. uh you want to retire at 55 you have right. seven years man and i don't uh, six, six you, months <laughs> there you go so i mean is that being a one-man shop is that going to get you there i mean is it possible for you to, to to i mean i don't i don't i mean is that you, i think you need to scale up I could put a, we could put a man on the moon. We could make steel float. You don't think I can uh, retire at 55? No, no. I think you absolutely can. <laughs> I, I, and I, I think you will. But what I'm saying is, you know, it, I, I guess what I'm – you need to outsource some of that stuff. I, and I'm just – I don't agree. Okay. I'm not a control freak. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not a guy that has to have my fingers in everything. I got great people around me. My short sale negotiators are amazing. I don't negotiate my own short sales. Got it. My TC – walks on water to me. I don't do that. Um, I don't, you know, I don't change my own oil. I don't mow my own lawn. I don't wash, you know, I don't vacuum my office. I have people that do all that stuff. Okay. I do what I love doing. I work 35 to 40 hours a week. Perfect. I, I work weekend, maybe. Um, I, I like my life. And, and the thing is, is that I'm not looking at this. I, I guess I'll step back. You can make a million dollars a year in real estate, especially in San Diego where values are so high. I don't know. I've never done it, but I, I kind of close last year. Um, I'm not trying to do this for 50 years. I got six and a half years. Yeah. And there's some people, my sister has a huge team. They do a lot of volume. Um, I, I got myself. I make as much money as her. Got it. Yep. And I think she makes a little bit more, but we're, we're neck and neck. My, my dollar amounts a lot higher. Um, I know people that have, you know, the hundred million dollar sales that have teams of six, you know, and then buyer's agents and all that. I don't know. Those you are know, headaches, man. I mean, people are headaches. You they know. can be. Well, and what I love about independent contractors is you piss me off. I just don't send you any more deals. Right. Right. I mean, I don't have the headache of a, of a, an assistant who, you know, is sitting there looking at, I don't know some was that video thing online that you, not you, porn but YouTube um, yeah YouTube and you know, Facebook just goofing off and um, I mean there are days where I'm like gosh I really would like an assistant I'll probably get another one this year um, just because I, I really want to you know take my business to the next level but I'm not looking to hire 15 people I'm not trying to build you either I you either have to go really small in a business you go really big yeah. And I'm lean and mean, and when it's when I'm 55, September 8th, 19, or 2020, I'm done. Got it. I love it. Well, listen, I, you know, I, I, I love your story. You know, you moved to a brand new city. You had no cash. You had no network. You had no friends. Uh, but you went out and, and you killed it. 
Um, so in, in, to wrap up, look, this is a question I don't ask everybody. I'm going to ask you because uh, this interview has been a little bit different than normal. But uh, just because <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> no, we just dug in. We dug in on your niche. And I, and I think I think there's going to be a whole bunch of people that are going to find it super valuable. And there's mm-hmm. going to be other people who go, uh, you know, I'm I just want to have do open houses or, or whatever. So <clears throat> so I love it. But um, it, is there something that I that I should have asked you, but I didn't? What, what have we missed in your story? I think the biggest thing is that people need to believe in themselves from the get-go because you're going to have a ton of people around you that I call dream stealers, right? And they're not, they're not as apparent as you think. You know, the, the, they're not the people that – the no's aren't the, the bad ones. It's the people that say, like, yeah, you tried. Yeah, you know, maybe you should try something else. Those are dream stealers. And um, I'll give you a perfect example. When I moved to Sacramento, my sister made me go to Joe Stump, buy her for only, and I got totally immersed in that. And he had this three-day event. And um, one of the things you had to do, I was there with my wife and three other brand-new agents. None of us had to sold a house, done a loan, or even talked to a, a prospect. And Joe's like, okay, I want you all to write down on a piece of paper what your goals are for income for the year. And so I write down, I want to make 100 grand. And no, yeah, I never made a hundred thousand or anywhere near a hundred thousand dollars at the time in my life. And so I put that down and then everyone else puts down their goals and then we have to share it with the other people in our little group. So, you know, we got the one gals, I'm going to make 30 and I want to make 50 and I want to make 45. And my wife's like, Oh, if we can make 30 grand, I'm like, I want to make a hundred thousand. Yeah. They're like, you can't do it. I was like, yeah, I can. Well, I didn't, but I made more than all of them combined. Right. And I've never made less than a hundred thousand a year since. And when I moved down here, you know, there's a lot, of, and these are people that love you and believe in you that are just like, you know what, you tried. You gave it your all. Come home. And I had that discussion with my sister, like, look, you're, you're taking away from my dream. Believe in me. And she's like, yeah, you, you know, you're right. I believe in you. Go get it. And, and it changed how she, her and I talked to, you know what, I believe in you and you can do whatever you want and whatever you believe. And I just stopped listening to those voices that, the no's are easy. It's the ones that are, that are in your inner circle that are telling you, yeah, gosh, you know what? It's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, you dust yourself off, step back. Yeah, no, forget that. Right. Right. You know, bring it at me hard. I could take no. And, you know, just don't let, don't be, let people write down your goals, write, write down your dreams, embrace them. And then don't let anyone get in your way. I'm I'm down with that I'm with that I look and I'll tell you I'll, I'll sh- and I you know for me I believe that you should have you should think big and then think bigger again number one number two share that with people put that out in the universe and I'll, I'll tell you so my goal is for this year um, I'm throwing out that I'm going to make a million bucks now I have made a million bucks before I did it um, but uh, you know this is an, I'm doing it in a whole new industry here I may not make a million bucks but I'll probably make 600 right uh, you know um, and 10 years from now Vince I want to be I want to be the Tony Robbins of real estate. That's what I want to be. Guys like guys like Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, all those those guys are old. They're they're gonna go away someday. It may be in ten years, and then there's gonna be a big gap that I'm gonna step in and fill. So, right. um, so I'm telling that, putting it out there. Uh, so, hey, listen, Vince, thanks for coming on the show. We always ask a couple things in the end. One book. One book. I, I'm an agent. I'm I'm struggling. I'm aspiring. Whatever it is, I have twenty five bucks. What book should I go buy? Oh my gosh. Uh, the E-Myth was a really good book for yeah. me. Um, I'm a, I'm a Donald Trump fan. Wow. And he's got this, this kick ass and take names book. I can't remember the name of it, but I got so far between that and Tony Robbins. Those guys fire me up. I, I'm um, with you. In anything fact- by them where it just says, you know what? Shoot for the stars. You know, don't, don't go for base hits. Don't go for bunts. The home runs are sexy. Bunts, they win games. The home runs are badass. Yeah, S- strike out or 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 it's it go all the way. I'm looking. Yeah, I mean, who do you who do you remember? Do you remember the bunting king of 2000 and whenever? Right. No, you remember the guy. You know, the guy that even though they're on roids, you remember the guy that that had the home run you know record. He didn't have the best ERA or batting average, but he swung for the fences. I love it, and I'm looking at my bookshelf right now at a Trump book. And uh, it's just the title is just how to get rich. Right. Bang. Isn't that what we're doing? There you go. That's what we're all hopefully we're all striving for. And look, everybody on this call. I mean, that, you know, these 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 are focused and pumped up people. And it, look, if anybody wants to get something from Tony Robbins, right, the um, uh, 
Awaken the Giant Within, it changed my life when I was 18. Again, right. I mentioned it earlier, you can go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and get a free download. Hey, uh, you know, I know that in terms of, I always ask also about a personal habit now. I know that, you, you know, you're this big, you know, Italian guy, you know, super good looking guy. I see a picture of you. Um, you know, you, you, you love CrossFit. Other than that, I mean, do you have a personal habit do you think that has contributed to su- your success? Um, I do the same thing over and over again. That's why your wife, your I'm girlfriend thinks you're habit. boring. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gives you crap about it, but I, you know what? I get up the same time. I go to bed at the same time. I do the same things. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, in there, different things in there, but, um, y- you can count on me. I mean, you know what? If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. If I'm, if I, I'm the guy that if, if you call me and say, Hey, can you help me move? And I say, yes, I'm going to be there. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, I think it's just personal integrity. I'm just true to myself. Bang. I love that. Hey, Vince, thanks for coming on the show. Let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, you can ch- check me out at uh, San Diego Smart Sale.com. That's San- just spelled out, uh, or Vince And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, email me. I'm, I'm all about, you know, giving it back. How cool. Hey, well, look, and everybody out there, you know, if you've loved this episode, you know, send Vince an email, ask him a question, or just say, just tell him thanks for taking the time out to come on the show because he took, a, you know, he took 47 minutes out of his life and his prospecting time to, to come on and talk to all of you. So, Vince, I really appreciate it. I'm right down the road from you. So, uh, you know, I'd love to, to meet one day and, and uh, buy you a cup of coffee. I'm down. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. Thank you. See you. Bye. Let's go. 